What's going on guys, Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I'm coming at you with an update for my Exosister deck and it's been a while since I did an update for this deck and essentially since it came out and that's because we know in Power of the Elements this deck is going to be getting massive support that's going to bump it up several tiers on a tier list like the support is amazing for the deck and similar to another deck that I took forever to upload, which was Marincess, I didn't upload a deck profile for that deck, like a real one, in eight months because we were waiting for support. And I don't want to do that with the Exosister, so I want to update it with the support it got from Dimension Force being Magnifica and show you guys what I'm working with with my current build as we await the best Exosister support coming out in Power of the Elements. Before we get into the deck profile, I do want to let you guys know Discord link down below along with all of our other social media links if you want to follow the channel more closely and hang out with the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Also, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's a small little goal I've made. I think we're quickly approaching at 8,000. So if you do like Yu-Gi-Oh! content and you enjoy what you see here, feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps me out in what I do here on the channel. But without further ado, let's get into this Exosister deck profile. Alright, so starting with the Exosister monsters, we have the three Ellis. Uh, of course, she is sort of like your best Exosister monster along with her partner in crime, which is the three Exosister Stella. Uh, every Exosister monster main deck has a partner where they sort of have bonus effects if they're on the field. Uh, and if they activate their effects while the others on the field, essentially just gain 800 life points, which is pretty nice. Uh, Ellis is the extender from hand, and Stella is sort of, you know, an extender on field. She can special one from hand as well. These are your main extenders, and really what you want to see them with isn't even each other. You want to see them with your uh, Exosister Sophia, of which we run three copies. Um, Sophia is probably, like, I, I wouldn't say she's the best Exosister because that's Stella and Ellis for now. Um, because they allow you to make rank 4 plays, but you want to see those with Sophia because she essentially just nets you a free draw, which is super huge in this deck because it essentially means you're starting with 6 cards, and I really like to see like Sophia Ellis or Sophia Stella, and then Sophia's partner in crime is the 2 Irene, and we're only on 2 of her because she is just, you know, the worst one, essentially. Like, she has an effect, but it's like they tried to make that effect as terrible as possible. Like, for cost, you send an Exosister card from your hand to the bottom of the deck, and usually you want your Exosister card, so you don't even want to do that often, uh, unless you just open so many. And then you can draw a card off the top of your deck, which is, like, okay, but the fact that she puts back for cost means she is hit heavily by Ash for no reason. Not like your opponent should be Ashing this card, but yeah, it's just like they tried to make her effect not great. So... We are running 11 Exosister monsters. I think these are pretty standard ratios overall. Like these are normal 11 Exosisters. Usually people play a bunch of level four extenders. And if you're wondering where those are and why I'm not going into those now, I will sort of explain uh, what I am playing over those slots when I get to it. And, uh, but going on with the rest of the Exosister cards, we have three Exosister packs. Definitely like the best engine card in the deck because essentially it is any Exosister card you want, except itself, which is very nice. Uh, you do have to pay 800 life points to activate essentially every Exosister uh, spell activated effect or Exosister trap. So Pax is no different. You pay 800 to activate. And this card is super good because it allows you to extend further based like if you search it off Mikhailis. Sometimes you can very easily extend into more plays just with this card. Uh, but also it's like a good card to set. Like if you open multiples of it because when your opponent does something that would target or move a card out of their graveyard, you can like chain this to it and special the Exosister monster uh, that's the partner of one that you control or in graveyard. And it's, it essentially allows you to uh, exceed someone on their turn like a Zodiac. And it's very similar to how you use Vodis in this deck. So this card can end up being like a super good interrupt as well as a starter. And it's definitely by and far the best Exosister engine card, barring maybe the trap. Uh, then we have one Arment and one Carpe Diem. Uh, so I'm playing one of each of these. I know in previous lists I've played multiple Armit, but honestly the card is sort of just a brick. Like, if you don't draw an Exosister monster, this card's terrible and doesn't help you play. Uh, so we have one because it's searchable and we don't want to draw multiples. Uh, honestly, if you could use it on your own turn more often, it'd be like a much better card, but the restriction is that your opponent has to control a monster, uh, especially someone from the graveyard, I believe, so that doesn't come up super often. For you to be able to use uh, the effect on your own turn but it is something to note that it comes up this card is actually insane it has three effects the first one's not super relevant but the second two are very relevant because essentially when you exceed someone in exosister monster it is a prohibition just for that turn which means it's a prohibition that can change and that's really good like if you're playing against something like sword soul 
and you're able to make an Exosister Xyz on their turn, be it with Arment or maybe they move something out of their grave. You can like, you know, Xyz summon an Exosister and then call Longyun and they it turns off an engine piece. But also this is an out to Mystic Mind because it'll be able like when you Xyz summon an Exosister monster even when you're under Mystic Mind, you can call Mystic Mind and it negates the effects on field. And then its other effect is when your Exosister monster uh, declares an attack or when a Battle? It, no, when an attack is declared involving your Exosister monster, so if it's attacked or it attacks. You can just target a spell or trap card your opponent controls and destroy it, which is super, super good. One for back row matchups, but also, again, Mystic Mine out. So that's why we play one of each of these. That is it for engine spells. The last card in the Exosister engine is the three Exosister Vodis, which this is sort of like the power play of the deck and it's sort of the main payoff that you're going to see off of your engine, besides like monsters from the extra deck. Um, this card is insane because if anything would move itself out of the graveyard, you can chain this to it uh, and then put two Exosister monsters on the field. And then once that card effect resolves, you essentially get two free Xyz summons, which is like super good. So say you like activate Ash Blossom and your opponent called by the graves, you can chain Vodis to call by the grave, special two Exosister monsters. That whole chain resolves and then you can activate both Exosister monsters to make like a Gabrine and a Mikhailis. And that is super huge value. And then if you have packs with it, you can end up summoning three Exosister Xyz monsters, and that is a lot of value. I think Exosister is positioned so nicely in the format currently because there's so many card effects that move things out of graveyards like Deer Note, uh, anything in Dragon Link, uh, all, like Lubelion for Branded, and like all the Tenyes for Sword Soul. Like right now, Exosister is positioned very well, and cards like Vodis get maximum value when things are sort of going its way in a format. I guess the last engine card is actually called by the grave. Like, this is a flex spot, but essentially it's just here to help your engine. Vodis is especially weak to hand traps like Ash Blossom. Uh, and, like, you don't want to lose to, like, Valor on your Stella or on your Mikhailis. So, we do run the one called by the grave. All right, now on to hand traps. My last build I uploaded was more of a trap heavy version with Lord of the Heavenly Prison. And I just feel like this format, that version isn't as applicable. Like, there's just a lot of really powerful, like, backer destruction effects, like Guardian Chimera and Sword Soul Blackout. But also, since the Brave Engine came out and, like, people started playing it more, like, the Brave Engine existed, obviously, while this deck came out because they came out in the same set. But with the Brave Engine coming back in full force, um, like, yeah, the back row version isn't something I'm super interested in right now. So we are playing loads of Hand Traps, which we have the three Ash Blossom, uh, excuse the different sleeves because these are actually uh, in a different deck currently as I'm currently playing Marincess quite a bit. Uh, three Effect Veiler, three Infinite Impermanence, and triple Nibiru. And these are just like a very standard 12 hand traps, like the three Nib, three Imperm, three Veiler, and three Ash. There's not much to say about them. These are like the standard 12. I will mention that I'm not playing Forbidden Droplet, which, you know, Droplet is an amazing card, especially in this deck that's weaker going second. But it's much harder for this deck to pay resources, so I'm just playing like the 12 uh, best hand traps in my opinion to sort of try and slow down the format a bit so I can pass back to my turn. And of course we're maxing out on Nibiru and Imperman Veiler that can help Nibiru sort of resolve. Alright, now we're getting back into what I said earlier with the fact that I'm not running like the generic level 4 extenders like Jigabyte or Inari Fire. And a lot of people really like those cards, but me personally, I'm not like the biggest fan. I think those cards are generically not super great. Like they're really weak on their own and you know, they're fine extenders when you have an Exosister monster with them, uh, but they also like open you up to Nibiru really hard. And one thing about this deck is like, I don't like opening myself up to Nibiru when the deck like shouldn't be weak to it inherently. Uh, yes, the extenders help you get to Magnifica a lot easier, and when Malpha comes out in Power of the Elements, I'll sort of have to change this theory, but I'll also be considering Cross Out Designator. Like, if I want to play this deck more like a, a combo-based deck with the Gigabytes, I would probably want to add Cross Out Designator because this deck is very weak to Ash. And then once you play those, it is suddenly very weak to Nibiru. So, I am not playing any Rank 4 Extender package, like I'm not playing the Magistus guy either, and I'm instead going to offer an alternative that I'm playing. Uh, which is essentially telling my opponent not to play the game. So, first off, we are going to be running two Trap Trick. And this card is not only good because it can search your Vodis, which is amazing, which means it's sort of an engine trap, but it can search uh, Imperm as well, which is, you know, decent if you have nothing else. But more importantly, the Trap Tricks can end up searching 
your very powerful floodgate traps. Which this is what I'm choosing to play over the rank four extenders are essentially some floodgates that can help our opponent, or not help our opponent, help us slow down our opponent. D Barrier is positioned very nicely in this format. It's been a power card essentially since Sword, Soul, and Despia were super popular. But now, even with all the, you know, emergency teleport Ride of Aramiza decks with the Punk Engine, you can still call Synchro, which is very, very good. And against a lot of rogue matchups, like Xyz ends up being a good option. This has a couple of terrible matchups where you want to side it out, but it's a very good card main deck. And of course, the YCS Heartfield winning Sword Soul list was also taking advantage of main deck D barriers with Trap Tricks. We're following something very similar with uh, Exo Sisters because the engine itself is quite weak. And while like level four extenders can help make your engine a little better by going for Magnifica, I am trying to stop our opponent from playing. So to pair off with those dimensional barriers, we have two Artifact Sanctum. And of course, when you're running two Artifact Sanctum, uh, it's very obviously you are playing the Artifact Scythe. And Scythe, is a brick, but you can run Tornado Dragon in this deck, which, so if you draw them, you can still make Tornado Dragon and pop your own Scythe, which is nice, but uh, the reason for Two Sanctum is when you're running Trap Trick, I actually like Two Sanctum a lot more, because you only have one Scythe, so when you see one Sanctum, uh, you don't want to see it anymore, and so Trap Trick allows you to banish a Sanctum and get the last Sanctum out of deck, so you don't have to worry about drawing it, you still resolve your Scythe. Uh, as well as not opening multiples of this card when you run less of it, which is very, very nice. So that's sort of why I like two Sanctum as opposed to three when I'm running multiple Trap Tricks, especially. Uh, and yeah, this package is super nice. And both the Sanctums and the D Barrier not only are really good at stopping your opponent's play and like making sure you get a turn to play essentially, but the last card we run in the deck, the final brick, is the Double or Nothing. And I absolutely hate this card. But when I'm running Scythe and D-Barrier, where oftentimes there are going to be opportunities where my opponent summons a monster in attack position, I flip such a powerful Floodgate, and they just leave that monster in attack, and it's really weak to Utopia Double, and you're able to use this and swing for game. Also, Exo Sister does have a problem, like, pushing through boards and attacking for game, and dealing damage in general, so this is a really good card at finding you easy opportunities for game that wouldn't be winnable otherwise and of course it is a brick so we are running technically two bricks in the list but i think it is worth it specifically because we are on scythe and the dimension barriers or dimensional barriers all right that is it for the main deck it is a 40 card main deck on to the extra deck we are playing the three michaelis uh this is obviously the one we're playing three of even post power of the elements we're still going to be playing three of this card because she is the main interrupt and the one you're going to go in most often because yeah she also is the one that adds extra sister spells and traps so everything about this screams that you want to play three of it uh then we have the two cast patel i think a lot of extra sister monsters besides michaelis are two ofs this one searches a monster which can come up especially post power of the elements um, but for now, it's just like a nice uh, additional effect. Uh, and this one also, I believe, stops your opponent from summoning monsters from the graveyard. Yes, this one stops you from special summoning monsters from the graveyard. Uh, then we have Gabrine, uh, another two of. This got a little better with Magnifica coming out because I think her 800 boost matters a lot more now that you're able to boost such a big monster. Uh, but this one is also the Imperm effect. So oftentimes when you Vodis, uh, one of your opponents like move from graveyard effects, you end up going for Gabrine and Mikhailis. Which is not only good follow-up, but also it's going to give you an imperm and a banish. So overall, that's very, very good. Uh, and then lastly, we have the one Astophiel. I feel like she comes up the least. Uh, she is a good way to help you clear boards a little bit. And she can also stop grave effects from activating, which in some matchups is very good. Um, but overall, the weakest Exosister Exceeds monster, in my opinion, is Astophiel. So uh, next up, we have one Exosister Magnifica. You can definitely play two of this, but I wanted to make room for other things in my extra deck. I think two of this will come up more post Power of the Elements when I'm going for it more, but as you can see, my build is definitely designed more to stun rather than combo, so multiple Magnifica isn't going to come up very often, uh, if ever. So, But yeah, this card is insane. This is the reason this deck got like a big boon in Dimension Force is because this card exists. She's like multiple interrupts in herself, but also she's pretty good at clearing boards because she can get two attacks of Battle Phase. Uh, as well as be like 28 or 36, depending on Gabrine. This card is a huge boost for the deck, and I'm super glad they got this support, but I cannot wait for Malpha in Power of the Elements. All right, the next package I think is going to make a lot of sense, as we saw Double or Nothing earlier. We are on the Utopia Double, and the Utopia, our nice and beautiful Astral Rare copy of Utopia. 
Uh, yeah, this package, again, is because we're running double or nothing, we want to be able to go for game. We just make Utopia 10,000 attack, any monster our opponent had with 2,000 attack or less left on the board, which, I mean, could be like anything when you were running D-Barrier and Scythe, so easy games with this card, but we are also running uh, not a proxy. I would make this Utopia Ray. I'm going to put an image of him on screen to help you guys know what this card is. I just actually do not own one because I've never needed him in any deck, but I think he's actually a cool card in this deck. Uh, and then one Utopia the Lightning, because obviously uh, if something like Utopia Double gets hand-trapped, it's very nice to be able to overlay Lightning and still get like a 5k beat stick on the board. Um, but yeah, essentially we're running the Utopia Ray, just so we can like go Utopia, overlay Ray, uh, and get four materials for the next card in the extra deck, which is of course the Zeus. I think when you're playing an Xyz based deck, especially one that struggles going second, something like Zeus is mandatory. And of course, side decking, you're running Dark Rulers and stuff to help make this card easier to resolve. But yeah, you should definitely be running this in your Xyz based deck. Uh, the last card in my list is the Baguska, just because he is positioned so well this format, being able to stop a lot of the biggest threats. Uh, however, again, I mentioned earlier, you should probably be running Tornado Dragon as well. Uh, so this could be a Tornado Dragon. You could take out the Utopia Ray if you want and forego having a four material Zeus, but I don't think that's like the best plan. Uh, you could probably take out a Gabrine potentially or a Caspatel. Uh, but yeah, like the extra deck is actually surprisingly tight because I want to play Tornado Dragon, but we just don't have the space. Uh, that is going to be it for the Exo Sister deck profile. I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, again, this is just an update sort of like in the Power of the Elements waiting room, right? Like the list is going to change a lot when Power of the Elements comes out. Uh, and this is sort of the list I'm having fun with and the most success with when I tested on Dueling Book. Um, yeah, like I, I feel like the Floodgate version is definitely a good version for it right now just because of how not strong the engine is. Like even ending Magnifica because you're playing all of those extenders isn't like the craziest thing in the world. So I wanted to put some actual win conditions in this deck. Um, I do think Gigabyte and the Magistus card are neat and I think they do have applications. And I do not think they are bad cards. So if you would rather play the combo version that is doing more, you know, fun combo stuff, uh, go ahead. You can take out the floodgates and the trap tricks potentially. Uh, but I think trap trick also is pretty good in this deck just because it can also get Vodis. Uh, but yeah, if you did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe. Um, tell me what you think of Exo Sisters. Are you excited for Power of the Elements or... You know, are you worried that the card is going to be a secret rare and be like 60 plus dollars? You know, that's always a big worry. But yep, this has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.